Greetings, everyone. Well, what did we just do? Two videos packed to the gills with new DVDs? Yeah, to any of you out there who've been under the misconception that I'm some kind of Blu-ray snob and I only buy Blu-ray, I don't. <laughs> I'm a content freak. I've said this before, I'll say it again now because there still seems to be some confusion about it. I'm a content freak. If something is available on both, yeah, I'll get the Blu-ray over the DVD. If it's a good transfer, if all the extras from previous releases are intact, and if I can get it for a reasonable price. You know, the same goes for DVD. I mean, I'm not going to get a new edition of something on DVD if it's inferior in some way to the previous edition. You know, it's just like, yeah, I, I still buy way more DVD than I do Blu-ray for the simple fact that I collect a lot of TV shows and cartoons and stuff that just aren't out on Blu-ray and probably won't be, if ever, for a very, very long time. If ever. So it's the same with VHS and Laserdisc. A lot of stuff came out on both of those formats that never came out on DVD. So if you want... Now it, it, it basically boils down to what are you more a fan of? Just being loyal to a particular format? Or are you a fan of content itself? Myself? Content. Every time. I lean towards the higher quality versions if available. When it comes right down to it, I'm about the content. Which is why, actually, some titles that I have on Blu-ray, I still have on DVD. Why? Because I got the Blu-ray for the better quality for the movie and the new extras, but hung on to the old DVD for the extras that were not included. And the baby just woke up. So why don't you guys watch the opening titles, and I'll see you after. Blu-ray update, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, well, let's start off with a video game. Uh, this was another thing that uh, Annetta picked up for me for Christmas. As you know, we've been really enjoying the LEGO adventure games, specifically LEGO Star Wars and LEGO Batman. Well, thought we might as well complete the trilogy with LEGO Indiana Jones. <laughs> so this is the first three movies adapted into interactive Lego form. We actually haven't played it yet. Well, we did play the demo back when the demo came out, but we haven't uh, actually popped this in and played it yet because, well, we, we're still in the middle of playing Batman, actually, and we don't want to rush it. We like to take our time with these games and just enjoy them and have a good time. And with the Lego games especially, there's just so much stuff you can do in them that, you know, you can quite comfortably take your time and explore and, and have a lot of fun and just keep coming back to it over and over again and finding new stuff. It's great. Love those games. Now, moving on to Blu-ray. Uh, again, in no particular order. This is one that I picked up today. Uh, it was a little bit late getting to the Boxing Day sales because we weren't sure what our funds were going to be like. Fortunately, Boxing Day is usually Boxing Week, and Walmart is no exception to that. Walmart had a whole pile of DVDs and Blu-rays on sale. Didn't have a lot to spend, but figured, well, we can probably spring for a couple of bargain titles. Uh, Rosie picked up one, a Barney DVD, and I picked up this one. James Bond, License to Kill. Two for 20 bucks, so 10 bucks for this, not too shabby. Um, as some of you will know, Annetta and I have been collecting the James Bond Blu-rays more or less as they've been coming out, but we held off on this one. Uh, the other one that we still need is Man with the Golden Gun. The reason we held off was because we were collecting the steel books, and we really wanted to have them all in steel books so the collection would be uniform. But with MGM currently facing bankruptcy and being in the process of being sold off, it looks like it's going to be quite a while before we see the rest of the James Bonds released on Blu-ray. So we thought, well, why don't we just get the two we need, complete the collection up to date, and then if they come out on Steelbook later, great, we'll get the Steelbooks later and just sell these ones. But for now, at least we'll have the movies. So, yeah. This is actually one of the few that I've never seen all the way through. I've only seen bits and pieces of it. So I'm actually really looking forward to see the, seeing this one. And Timothy Dalton, coincidentally, just appeared in the recent Doctor Who 2009 Christmas special. I won't say who his character was, because it'll kind of spoil things if you have not seen that special yet. But suffice to say, he was awesome in it. So there you go. 
There, there I go again with the, so there you go. I'm not even going to bother pointing it out because you notice. <laughs> James Bond, 007, License to Kill, Timothy Dalton's second and final appearance as James Bond. Now here's one I picked up for Annetta as a Christmas gift, a show that we uh, watched when we were in Calgary, actually, for the first time. We only saw, we saw most of the first season, but have since fallen way behind, so we're just going to get caught up with the Blu-rays as they come out. I am, of course, talking about every comic book fan's wet dream show, Heroes, Season 1. <laughs> um, I don't really know of any comic book or sci-fi fans that don't enjoy this show, or at least didn't enjoy the first season. I don't know. I've heard kind of mixed reviews of subsequent seasons, being careful to avoid spoilers, of course. Annette and I saw, I believe, the first 17 episodes of this, or pardon me, 17 chapters, as, as they like to call it. Um, and just never got around to seeing the rest of it, so we're really looking forward to that. I think for the most part, the, co the contents of this are the same as the uh, old HD DVD version that came out. Just a little more in the way of interactive features because of the, you know, the greater capabilities of BD Java versus HD DVD's uh, browser software. If we uh, take a look inside here, see it's quite nice. Basically just has this duplicated again. Got a nice cast picture on there. And things falling out. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. So we get a little... Is this an actual... Do we actually get a booklet? Oh, we got a user guide. It's actually... It seems to be really rare for Blu-rays to come with booklets. I don't know why that is. Because they have the little clips for the booklet inside the cases, just like DVDs do. But they just never seem to do booklets. Ah, so inside... This actually isn't too bad. So they did it in the gatefold cover with sort of comic book style... Uh, lettering, and they list the episodes and features of each disc in there. So that's that. And it is, I believe, five discs. Yes, five discs. So quite a nice collection. We haven't started watching this yet. Well, it's it's been so long since we've seen the first season. We're basically just going to start over again. Uh, plus, the, actually, the version of the pilot that's on here is an extended version, apparently. It's like a 73-minute version versus, what, like a 45-minute version? So it's like <laughs> almost 20 or 30 minutes longer. It's almost like having a whole extra episode. So, yeah. So anyway, definitely looking forward to that and picking up the, uh, the second and third season. I guess they're, what, in their fourth season now? Um, yeah, so we'll get all those eventually. But uh, this was actually on sale. I think it was on sale for about 50 bucks. The set normally goes for about 70 or 80. So we couldn't pass it up for 50 bucks. So got that for Netta for Christmas. And speaking of sales, a couple of other sales actually, which is uh, a couple of sets that I used to have on DVD. I actually had the original releases of these on DVD and sold a while ago. You probably see them in my old DVD over overview collections. Well, since doing those, I have sold them because the Blu-rays came out. And in this case, the Blu-rays contain absolutely everything that was in the previous DVD release, so there was no problem uh, with, with uh, swapping one for the other, essentially, in, in terms of my collection. Plus, the Blu-ray versions take up a little bit less uh, shelf space, which is nice, you know, slimmer cases. So the first one I got normally goes for 100 bucks. I got it for 50 on sale just before Christmas. The Batman Motion Picture Anthology, 1989 to 97. Uh, two of my all-time favorite Batman movies in here, Batman and Batman Returns. Um, I didn't really mind Batman Forever. I thought it had a few too many subplots, but otherwise, you know, isn't totally without merit. Batman and Robin, however... I have to go with the crowd and agree that it was a complete and utter mess of a film and worth watching only for unintentional comedic value. So if we take a look inside here, this opens up exactly the same way as the old DVD version did, the only difference being it's a much slimmer case. The, uh, the old DVD was basically four standard keep cases, uh, double discs, uh, so they had a flip tray inside, uh, but standard size keep cases in a box. So picture the thickness of four keep cases across. That's how thick the original box was. Now this one is about the thickness of two keep cases because it uses the slim uh, cases for the for the Blu-rays. So if we slide this out here, you can see there's Batman 89, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, 
a digital copy of Batman and Batman and Robin, or I should say the, the code thing for the digital copy. So, uh, where am I going here? Sorry, this is getting organized. And then it's, uh, if you're wondering about the full box here, this is actually an insert that goes in here. So, it's a little odd, but I think it looks pretty, pretty cool actually. It's very classy. And I like how the main thing is the logo from the, the 89 movie. And then this, this is a slightly modernized version of the, this is basically the original logo, more or less. And this is a slightly, uh, you know, punched up version of it. So anyway, very cool to have those back in the collection. And it does have all the extras that were on the previous editions. And they're all single discs, except for the original the first one, which also has a digital copy. Now some of you may have noticed that the first Batman is also available in a snazzy Digibook edition. Very nice, often reasonably priced. The Digibook is the exact same disc that's in this set. The only reason to get the Digibook is for the packaging and the collector's book. I am obsessed with Batman 89 enough that I may actually do that at some point. But not right now. I'm just happy to have the collection back. Uh, likely, if I see the Digibook on sale somewhere for like, you know, 10, 15 bucks, I'll pick it up just because. But uh, for now, I'm quite content just to have this. So, total amount of Batman I have on Blu-ray now is all of these four movies, of course, and the two Christopher Nolan films. So, still need to get Gotham Knights, still need to get the 60s movie, and some of the other DC Animated Universe movies that had Batman in them that are available on on Blu-ray, the Justice League stuff and things like that.